<laughs> All right. So next we have the one, the only Miss Michaela McCord. We're going to bring her on. There she is. Hi. Our resident, our resident psychology expert. How are you? I am doing well today. Um, I have a 65 pound dog in my lap. So that's always lovely. That is lovely. Hi, Maslow. <laughs> you would not take no for an answer. I, I kept telling him not today and it didn't happen. Not having it. He's not having it. So I know you were listening to Tara's segment. So um, as a psychology major, as somebody who's helped in recruiting and done recruiting, and as somebody who has been in the workforce um, and done some studying of your own on diversity and inclusion and some research, what are some of your thoughts about the steps that she recommended that companies take? Um, remind me of specifically like the what, some of the steps that. Okay, like so bring in a real DEI expert, right? Not just somebody who is themselves diverse, and don't ask your one and only black employee to do it because <laughs> a lot of companies do that. Um, pressure, and you know, somebody. it but. is, and it is, yeah. They already have their whole job to do, right? So that's kind of mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and then you know, take the steps. And talk to people and shh, don't you don't speak. Shh, shh, not about you. Yeah. And this 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 isn't how you listen. Listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> um, no, I entirely in all seriousness, no, I, I entirely agree. I'm gonna first talk about that last one you mentioned because I remember her talking about that one. And that was actually something I was gonna brush on today is listen. Don't and don't listen to respond like like you were talking about. Listen to understand what their problems are, what they're facing. And if something happens and you unintentionally, I'm sure, create, um, did a discrimination, uh, um, committed a discrimination, we'll just say committed. <laughs> um, sorry, I thrown off my boyfriend just got home and I was not expecting that. Um, but no, I am. Um, if, if you do unintentionally cause a discrimination or discriminate against somebody, seek to repair that rupture. That's when healing occurs is when you repair the rupture that was made. Um, yeah. and, so I just, and I don't walk up and make an excuse. I want to put, put that in there. Don't walk up and go, well, I didn't mean to do it. So what you did it dummy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> say, yeah, it, it doesn't you really say, matter didn't intend to, even if it was a more covert response, it still was a discrimination and it still caused damage. Yes. You can say, I apologize. I made a mistake. I did not mean for it to come across that way. However, I realized my mistake, you know, how would, you know, and if you don't know a better way to do it in the future, ask, people will tell you, oh yeah. Okay. So in the future, say it like this, or, you know, just don't say it at all or you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. A lot of shame can come into play on the part of the person who um, committed the discrimination, um, committed to such a a harsh word, but I think in this situation, it, it does, it does fit. Um, I think there's a lot of shame involved in that response. And the fact that they, they did something, they create, they caused harm. And then it's that embarrassment of one, not wanting to admit it, that it happened and two, trying to defend themselves to make themselves look better. Um, and when I think it, it actually makes, it, it opens the wound even more. And so I think when you can actually show, show a little bit of humility there and say, you know what? I did this. How can I repair it? Then you make yourself look even better. So right? <laughs> you defend yourself from the embarrassment. When you actually admit to it, you actually make yourself look better. So. Yes. Yes. And and I do want to say to you guys, um, because I've I've been on on the side of this, and I actually have a very good friend of mine who speaks a lot about this too. Um, also have some grace for people. And if somebody's a good person and you know that, you know that they're you know, not hateful and all that, and they slip and do something, maybe instead of letting it sink in, just go, oh, hey, just so that you know, I'd, I would really appreciate it if you would say it like this better. That would be better for me. Just communicate and realize that they may not have meant it. They may not have meant to be hateful or hurtful. So do kind of have some understanding. But guys, if you mess up, don't be like, oh, well, you're just being sensitive. No. <laughs> Stop and acknowledge what you did. Realize that it's not a personal attack on you. Everybody makes mistakes. As Stacy just pointed out in the comments, everybody messes up. It's how you handle it. Well, and I also want to comment on even, even if the person is being sensitive, 
they have a right to be sensitive. There is oh, a well, reason true. they are responding. No, and that's not against you at all, Cap. And that's just, I wanted to- No, it's true though. Drive home that point is, is that they absolutely have a reason to be sensitive. Um, they have probably been through something like that before. And if they're responding to it sensitively, I trust that reaction. Um, but right. it, doesn't, it doesn't come out willy nilly. It's not someone just responding sensitively as much as there is a, there is a reason that their body had that reaction. And, and to your point, I, I recently, I, so, so building out this anti-discrimination technology, I, I have been doing a lot of interviews and getting to know people's stories. And I recently had someone who is a minority LBGTQ woman <laughs> and gets all kinds of discrimination. Tell me, um, you know, a lot of times it's, it's the built up. It's not that that one incident is so bad. It's the history mm-hmm. of constantly being told you are less than, you don't deserve, you are wrong, you are bad, you, you know, all these things. And mm-hmm. listening to the stories, that is what some people have communicated to them. Oh, and it. yeah, and and it's it's traumatic just to hear it. I can't imagine living it. Um, and so- to to your point, Michaela, remember, folks, that there is a lot of built up hurt. And so we have to work on all of that. One thing, um, and I would love your thoughts on this, Michaela, I've talked about this before on the show, there are companies that have now started bringing in psychologists several times a week, and you're allowed to take mental breaks or mm-hmm. mental power ups, as they call them, and go have a session with a psychologist. And in the middle of work day, you just, you just sign up and it doesn't matter. And they, and I've talked to several companies. It does not matter if you had a meeting scheduled, anything, you just make sure that any things with clients are taken care of and you go and you sit for 20, 30 minutes, talk about it. And then one of the things too, that they do, and they don't have any specifics, but they have the psychologist then work with them on, Hey, as a company, where are we messing up with our people? Hmm. Well, I think you absolutely know my thoughts and opinions on that. Um, I wholeheartedly um, support companies that care about their employees enough to offer mental health services like that, because I think you're actually sure you may be, like you said, maybe a meeting's canceled, maybe something like that happens. However, in the long term for productivity, I think you're actually going to be surprised at the effectiveness um, that such interventions have on, on staff overall. Right. Absolutely. So you had some research that you prepared for us today. You had some really cool things that you wanted to share. I want to make sure we get to that. So tell us a little bit about those things. Yeah, um, I actually have, um, I don't want to take full credit for this research. And I want to um, actually give a shout out to the friend I got this from. I, I have a friend at the Fort Worth campus. Um, I'm, I'm at Tarleton here in Waco. And um, for those of you who didn't know, I have a friend at the Fort Worth campus who is a, a white male in his 40s, and he has done extensive research on how racism affects um, specifically African Americans is usually what he looks into. Um, and he does everything he can personally, and he he um, advocates. Um, he's he has been definitely a beacon to me, and I have I have great admiration for him. So anyway, I reached out to him and just said, you know, hey Paul, I'd love to pick your brain about this. I'm presenting on this, and I really want to get it right. I really want to do this justice. Um, and so he gave me um, a lot of good ideas and Tara actually covered a good amount of them. And I was just going to add a little bit on top. And one thing in particular that I wanted to mention was that at one point at the very beginning, she says, I, she said, I don't make judgments about people and what a beautiful way to view interactions with others. And I also wanted to throw in there a little, a little tweak that I would add. Um, and I would add that she is intentional about her judgments about people. Um, right. I think that is even more powerful because mm-hmm. as, as humans, we are going to make judgments. That is how our brains are programmed to make discriminations. And, and when I say discriminations right now, I'm not intending the prejudices. I, right. I, I'm very much intending discriminations to mean just noticing differences. So discernments. Um, Discernments. There you go. Yes. yes. Our brain is, is programmed to make discernments about, about different situations. And I want to use the example here of walking through, let's say, just 
grass, you're walking through grass and there's a garden hose. If you're not, if you're, if you're very caught off guard by that, you're going to think it's a snake. You're very likely to think it's a snake and freak out. That is a very quick d- discernment to make to keep yourself safe. And that's a good example of what our brains do on a very consistent basis, um, regardless of what we're doing. And um, it's, it's also like when we, there's a, in, in my studies, we've talked very much about when you meet somebody for the first time, you have already determined who they are as a person within mm-hmm. less than a second. You have, because our brains do that for survival. That's how we're programmed. Yes. So I think the most important thing to solving discrimination is to be personally aware of the biases that you bring, of the discriminations that you can bring to the table and react with intentionality. Yes. Yes. 100%. I love that. And I think as that applies to hiring, you you know, when you go in to do an interview, you can see all kinds of different things about a person from their resume and you may have something in your head. It's important to remember that you may be wrong and to go into, to consciously make an effort to go into an interview with a clean slate. And Mm -hmm. because I have had people over the years and I can, from personal experience, I had to train myself out of my own biases when I interview. It is hard to do. This takes some work. Um, Frankly, it's something that ought to be taught in every uh, HR class (laughs) before you're allowed to graduate. Mm -hmm. But um, you have to learn to remove your biases. And and I've been bitten with it. So I've gone in thinking, oh my gosh, this person's not going to have any energy. You can just tell like the way that they communicate. This is so boring and they've just done all these things. They don't know how to, you know, hunt. It was a sales position. They don't know how to hunt. They just want to sit there, you know, and get leads. I got on the phone completely different from that. Just all Hmm. the energy in the world knows how to go out and just get business, all this. And I looked like an idiot. I mean, not to anybody other than myself, (laughs) thank goodness, but I that's but you, I did. Know, you look like an it. Well, and <laughs> no, it's okay. I look like an idiot to myself. That's but okay. That, I did. The captain, you caught yourself. You caught what was happening, and you decided to do something about it. And like I said earlier, you sure you may have felt like an idiot, um, seemed like an idiot to yourself, and felt embarrassed. But then you repaired that, and you were like, you know what? No, I'm going to catch this. I'm going to do something with it. Um, and that's a huge key in solving any problem: is being willing to admit. This was less than perfect, could have definitely done that better, you know, and, and, and then going from there. So when you, I think when you run into an issue like this, and I've, I've dealt with this with clients that like, it's like talking to a brick wall. They don't want to hear it. It's no, they need to adjust. No, they need to do this and that. Or, or in their minds, we punish the person who wronged them. So what's the big deal? Well, that person felt emboldened to behave that way. So what's going on in the company that they felt it was okay to behave that way. Yes, but taking personal <laughs> responsibility for oneself seems to be less, yeah, seems to be less and less common. And that's extremely unfortunate to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I actually, in, um, going along with what you said, as far as the hiring process, Catherine, and noticing discrimination, I actually have sort of just, it, it's a little, it's not like a huge um, intervention or anything for oneself, but it's something I thought about that might help you okay. know when discrimination is happening. And <laughs> I I thought about, this is something I catch, I catch myself with. I, I will like be walking in Walmart or something, um, walking down the side of the street. And if I see somebody and I'm making um, a judgment about them, like, hmm, would I think the same way about a white male in his thirties. Mm-hmm. What I think the same way about, you know, a young, a young woman instead of an old woman. And mm-hmm. those are the things that I just a very easy way to quickly catch myself and yes. put, put in my mouth. There is a powerful, to your point, there is one of the most powerful scenes I've ever seen in a movie um, is A Time to Kill. It's got Samuel L. Jackson and Matthew McConaughey. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of the, the crest, the, like the, the summation is, is it's about a man who kills his daughter's rapist because they weren't going to be punished because they were white guys in the South back in the day when that was, you know, all that mattered. And so in his summation, Matthew McConaughey has the whole jury close their eyes and he walks them through everything that this little girl went through. And it was a little child Mm -hmm. that she went through. And he said, and now picture that she's white. And the look on Mm -hmm. everybody's face was just, so shocked, of course. And then, and then it turns out that they, uh, 
they let Samuel L. Jackson off and, and all this, but it was, it was such a powerful scene because you stop and you think it's amazing how we separate other human beings from ourselves to that extent, just because they're a little bit different and we forget, Mm -hmm. no, we're all people. We're Uh all, (laughs) we're all the human experience. And you and I have a multicolored family, right? Mm -hmm. We, (laughs) we have cousins that you would not think are related to us. If you saw them, I mean, blood related people (laughs) that do not look anything like us. And, and I think that, that it's interesting and and maybe that's why we think the way that we do about you know ever it doesn't matter what color you are or whatever um but it really doesn't it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter your age and it to your point it doesn't matter your gender and it doesn't we're all part of the human experience and every single person has their own way to behave and so when you're hiring that's what you have to look at how does this person respond how does this person you know, handle all of these different things. That's what you have to look at. That's mm-hmm. absolutely paramount is to focus on the actual person. So in hiring folks, when you are doing your interviewing and you are, um, and you're going through all this, you have to remember to do those exercises like Michaela talked about, get your biases out of your head and start with the clean slate and learn that person, that human being, that's who you're hiring. I would also throw on there something that I just remembered that Paul and I talked my my friend and I spoke about last night. And it's something I never considered that I think is important when you're also considering the hiring process and addressing discrimination. And that's the fact that, you know, the, the white privilege is something that we've talked about on this show before. And I he addressed a white privilege that I had not considered, and it was that um many minorities have assimilated into the white culture and that's a privilege that we have i you know i just i don't think so dress nearly enough um and it's so true that you know now we look at minorities who are acting white quote unquote um and we're like oh well they're so well put together there's a professional person and it's like yeah but we have integrated their entire culture out of them like you just and so I, I just I think that it's also a matter of appreciating the person with the culture and what that culture brings to the table. Not yes. you like your culture. Right. And culture is and I, like I talked about with Tara, culture, you want different cultures, okay? You want different ages, different uh, educational backgrounds, people that are parents, people that are not, people that have traveled the world, all these kinds of things. Why? Because that's how you learn your customer base better. That's how you have a more successful business. And it factually does result in higher revenues <laughs> you so she's right seek out different cultures seek it out go we don't have anybody from africa who's lived in canada and then moved to the united states fascinating yeah. what do you know that's experience <laughs> that's what that is in a lot of experience yeah yeah i i had a i had an employee i'm going to say this real quick and then we're going to move on to our next guest i had an employee at a security company who had literally walked thousands of miles to the United States, came in legally, just in case anybody out there wonders, uh, but walked thousands of miles and started this whole new life with no money. Like, that's amazing. Mm. <laughs> and, and the stuff that you can learn from somebody with that kind of tenacity and that kind of willpower is incredible. So go find people that have done all different kinds of things, had different experiences. We have an aunt who graduated high school in Papua New Guinea. Hmm. Like how cool, you know, find people with different experiences and hire them. That's what I have to say anyway. (laughs) I appreciate that. All right, lady. Well, thank you so much, Michaela, for coming on. We really appreciate having you as always. Everybody find Michaela McCord on LinkedIn and connect with her. She'd be happy to connect with you. And we'll say bye for now. Bye, guys. Bye.